Episode 46. 46. 46. Because we were stuck on 45 for a while. We were on 46. 45 for, I feel like, three weeks. For at least that one episode. I feel like wild. we've been in the 40s for a very long time. I feel like it's been like 40, 41, 42, 43. Yeah, but don't you feel like it's been... No, it actually, that's a good point because it felt like we were stuck early for a while. Then, like all, of, then all of a sudden it was like, And we're 38. We and then it does, does feel like the, yeah. the 40 range has been here for a while. But... I'm just going to jump straight into this. Love it. This is an incredibly stupid thought, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. But this morning, driving here, driving to the office, I was like, what if you were able to, like if I was a top draft pick, could I like not somehow get drafted? And I was, I think this is where it breaks down because I think that you don't like enlist for the NFL draft, but just say that you did. You talking about the army? Like, no, like declare to be drafted <laughs> or whatever. But what if you're like your favorite team, is the the Panthers and you're like I'm gonna not get drafted let them get a draft pick and then I'm gonna sign with them obviously you wouldn't do it for the Panthers because they're gonna suck and have first round draft picks but could you just like choose your own team then essentially like if Ooh. you were good enough you're like I'm not gonna do the combine I'm not gonna do the draft I'm gonna sign as a free agent I'll have less leverage but I can go to my favorite team that could be stacked because I'm basically like in this scenario which again would never happen I'm like the number one draft pick so it's like I'm the number one draft pick and I can give it to whatever team I want yeah, that's but pretty, it's, it's such a money thing. It is a money because obviously you don't have you the can't leverage. Pay if you, like free, like rookie free agent in their cap on what you can pay. Yeah, and you have like agents. no leverage power. But the concept of it, it would never work in reality. And I think there actually is something. I was looking this up because I was curious. Do you enlist in the? Did in you enlist in the NFL draft? There's a supplemental draft that used to happen, and I guess sometimes does. Oh, there was okay. a second draft where teams could use their next year's draft pick on. And it was a supplemental draft. And I guess it still is a thing, but it used to be a much bigger one. Oh, I'd never even heard of that before. Yeah, I didn't. So it was saying... also on Reddit that I saw this. So we have no idea if it's true or not. <laughs> you never but know. I was like, this is interesting. You never know what, what Reddit has to say. You never know. I mean, who who knows? But all this, you know, because as a kid, you always wanted to play for your favorite team. And like, what if you, always. for some reason, didn't care about the money? And it was all about, I want to be the Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback. Ooh. And with, they're good, yeah. and they don't have a, the early round draft pick, and so you would fall to like twentieth overall, and you're like, you know what? I'm not going to get drafted. I'm a junior. But then all of a sudden, you sign. Ooh. And Ooh. Then you then you set yourself up because you're on a good team, and then it's Hold what we're talking on. about. Because we're talking about all the quarterbacks that get drafted early, and it's the wrong situation, and it screws it up for everyone else, That's including true. themselves. Don't quarterbacks though? Has haven't a couple of them said like, I'm not playing for this team? Well, Eli Manning, he was drafted by the Chargers. So, because Philip Rivers was drafted by the Giants and Eli Manning was drafted by the Chargers, he was like, "I'm not playing for the Chargers." Wow. Yeah, it worked out for both quarterbacks actually. I mean, yeah, think about it. Also, I'd take. San Have Diego. the Chargers ever won a Super Bowl? The Chargers are one of twelve teams who are yet to win a I Super Bowl. I don't think so. Like the Panthers, you can put the Panthers in there. My goodness, they are. That 2015 season franchise. was brutal, and they won't because they're cursed. Tepper. Brought the curse with them. Man, so Good thing I'm not a fan anymore. You know what I'm saying? Well, Wonderful. good thing you're a 49ers guy. And, yeah. and they just need more talent. So Yeah, I mean, obviously, we can get into this later and we'll get into this later. But my misery finally ended. It did. I had an enjoyable Few Saturday. We were playing Vandy, but South Carolina finally just like rolled a team for once. Then the 49ers won. The misery might be over. I'm not going to say that because Honestly. I've been condemned to it my entire life. Yeah. but Except the Braves. Except, except for the Braves. They've had some down years, but... They've had some good But years. still, obviously. Chipper Jones, maybe Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones. So why do people suck at driving? So I'm not a great twice driver. Twice in the last probably month and a half, there's been an ambulance coming. And so I either, one time I was at the light, and so I didn't go because there's an ambulance driving through with their lights on. And then the other time it was uh, it was on the way in today, it was coming up from behind me. And so like obviously I like scoot over a little bit and it passes. Both times... People around are acting like they've never seen emergency lights on before. And they just stay there. And they, Or, well, so today, someone literally cut it off in front of them. Like, went straight through the intersection in front of them. Like, the, the ambulance no had to stop. Feel. Had to stop to not get hit. You think it's because people are just on their phones? I mean, or, this was an old dude. Or, oh, it's an old dude. Okay. But still, it could be. But people listen to their music so loud. I mean, I, I do. Yeah. But people listen. But the crazy thing about lights is that you can see them too. Especially if they're flickering. 
Yeah, it's crazy. That that gets your so, attention. But this is the one that drove me crazy. This is the one that was a month-ish ago. I was sitting at a light, ambulance was coming. I didn't go, it turned green. And this car behind me starts laying on the horn. Shut up. Is the ambulance coming behind yes. you? Oh my gosh. I was like, are you stupid? What you do? Then, then get this. I just didn't do anything. I'm like, whatever, I'm tired, keep going on. Drive past. This car flies past me and starts yelling out the window at me. I'm like, you literally thought I was just sitting at this light turning green because I wasn't paying attention. Joke's on you because I'm not trying to kill one of the first responders. So they were right behind you though? like Yeah, like right behind me. So he cut off the, or she. No, so uh, didn't go through the light. Once the light, like once the ambulance passed, then we start going and it like finally is able to get around me and like flies past me. Yelling at the oh, window. So gotcha. they had to even see it come past too. Do you think people are just, I'm Stupid. not going to make a comment. I'm yes. just going to make a bad comment. Probably the answer is yes. <laughs> oh, nah. But people suck at driving. That is, yeah. But I, mean, I don't know. Maybe it's from COVID. Like maybe it's you're, not. You feel like you're a good driver. I feel like I am very aware of what's happening around me. I'm not saying the best, but like at least I see emergency lights. And has has your driving improved since getting a Tesla? I don't know. I've I've noticed that a lot of Tesla drivers are not very good. Right. They just take it off the autopilot. Just... They're like. I don't need autopilot. Sure. They probably got it because they were bad drivers. And so yes. they could use the autopilot, but then they decided not to use the autopilot. And so instead they're just bad drivers with the bad car. Bad drivers. That's all yeah, that is. It's crazy. Are you a good driver? It depends, I think, for me. I think sometimes I am a good driver and I'm very aware. And mm -hmm. other times I've been caught either on a phone call or trying to get directions up or responding to something that I'm not as aware as I should be. I'm not aware of directions on the screen. Like I'm pretty good at navigating just on my own, oh, but if I'm it's not. on the screen in front of me, I will just not see it. Oh, I'm not. Caitlin's like, how did you miss that turn? I'm like, sorry that I'm looking outside of the car yeah. for stuff. <laughs> like you're not, you're not focused on right. I'm not inside. looking at the screen right yeah. in front of me, Same. but I will constantly miss turns if I'm following a GPS. It's, yeah. it's so bad. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it depends on time for me. Yeah. Anything else new in your life though? <laughs> any random stupid thoughts like what if you didn't get drafted and you went to your favorite team or people uh, suck at driving uh, let's see some some things going on in my life i am wondering when i'm ever going to get new golf clubs i'm also wondering why i play the sport of golf dude I'm, golf sucks i'm also wondering when i'm going to really be consistent in the gym again <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering a lot of things. There's a right lot of now. stuff going on. I'm there. also wondering, like, what is the proper? Actually, this is something I'm thinking about a lot. Mm. What's the proper dessert ratio? Do we think? Like, you're you're very in terms anti of number dessert. of daily daily dessert. Like, what do we think? Wait, sorry, saying <laughs> number of times a day or how many days a week? No, like a day. Like how? Like, <laughs> okay, define a dessert. I know that's. People are going to be like, what do you mean a dessert? You yeah. know what I'm saying. Keith. So a dessert could be something as small as like, you know, like like the mini candy, like a mini Snickers, right? Like something that small. So we're not saying a sugary snack. We're talking like chocolate or- But we could be, I mean, I'm talking- Like the fruit roll-up stuff. Like the- No, that's not okay. dessert. No. Okay. That, that's why I was clarifying. That's not dessert. I'm talking about like some chocolate bars or some cinnamon rolls or some ice cream or some cake. How like, much do you like it? I think twice a day for me is. Well, how much do you enjoy it when you have it? A lot. Do it. You're in fine shape. But You're my body, to. my body's getting to be not in fine shape. Yeah, but you can still do stuff. So it's in the range of fine shape. And so, what would you rather have? Two desserts a day, or a little bit better shape? Two desserts a day. Then do two yeah, desserts. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. That's anyone else <laughs> here to make you feel better about your life choices. I haven't wanted that a lot because, oh. you know, Halloween and then Thanksgiving. Yes, and then... yes, yes. Here's the thing for figure wise. I mean, I am the epitome of sexiness, but figure wise, is it better if you cut out extra portions or cut out desserts? That's a big one. Probably the extra portions, right? You would think. Ooh, I think it depends on goals too and what the food is. So Let's say total weight, total weight, weight loss, weight. I yeah. think that uh, portions. Like portion control. What about like if you want a, a huge pectoral or something? I think that if you're having a ton of sugar, that can kill your diet. Mm -hmm. Like if you're trying to like, I guess, make like crazy gains and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, also, 
if you're having like another plate of rice and chicken, say, it's like, you're gonna be fine doing that. That's, that's what I've been pondering though. And another actually- Because you're trying to get shreddy and enjoy desserts. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to just be lazy, enjoy desserts and maybe work out once a week. And be shreddy. And be shreddy. Yeah. <laughs> I love and it. be shredded. You're on, uh, you're on to it. Another, another question. The last thing I'll say that's going on in my life that I'm pondering. Mm -hmm. we, we could start doing a quotes that I'm pondering. Mm. But this isn't a quote at all. I'm just pondering this. Make I don't your, even know say it, dude, say it out loud. It's a quote. Know just say it and it's a quote now. even means. Ooh, that's a, that's a good quote though. So. <laughs> say it and it's a quote. What is the best or the most optimized caffeine consumption times? I think about that. <laughs> I don't even. I'm halfway following what you're saying. I just do this all the time. Like if you're trying to get a caffeine boost, what is the optimal time of day to consume caffeine? Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. And, and plus, plus, how much do you need? And it varies between person. Ooh. But here's my thing. How much do you thing. need? Here's my or? thing. Here's what I've been doing. Yeah. Is I've been waiting probably two hours after I wake up. Not every day, but most days. Yep. To drink caffeine. So mm -hmm. I wait like, you know, a couple, at least an hour, definitely more normally two. Say I have a cup at nine o'clock, cup of joe. Right, mm -hmm. cup of coffee. Wake up at seven, have a cup at nine, yep. right? Glass of water, I'm feeling good. Well, then I have another cup at like- you hear the sirens? I though? hear the sirens, yeah. People How many aren't, people, people aren't very few. No. Especially very few. I'm just very few. Anyway, sorry to interrupt you. And and then I have another one at 1030. Okay, that's two cups, not crazy. Uh huh. Do I go for a third? Like, not, so morning, I don't know. I, I think you don't go for a third. And I think you go for the third at 2 p.m. Should I confess or yeah. not? Yeah, confess. Uh, let's just take Sunday, for example. I had a coffee in the morning. Yep. I had a Celsius in the morning. Oh, so that's 300 milligrams right now, caffeine. Um, I think it was a quad for the coffee. So I think I'm over 300 a now. A quad? Yeah. Like a quadruple shot? Yeah. Of espresso. Yeah, because so that's, that's what like, Caitlin normally orders me. Then, So you're like 450 now then. Because yeah. that's like 250. Because yeah. it's like 50 or 60, I think. Yeah, per... Pro probably. We'll, we'll just say 400. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Then I had another coffee at like 9 p.m. Like just a normal cup of joe? It was the Nespresso, which I think is a little bit stronger than like a So let's say 100. Coffee. We'll do 100. Yeah. So... That wasn't terrible. But so a lot of times between actually, five and 600 milligrams. Yeah, because there, there are a number of days where I'll do two. Yeah, actually, if I look at last week, I've probably been averaging two Celsius's in a coffee a day. Yeah, that's a lot more than me. No, I think but, I feel better about that. Yeah, I feel worse. It's crazy how that Maybe happens. Maybe cut out like one of the Celsius and so, do yeah. a cup of coffee. Here, here's the problem though. I, in the morning, I'm not a morning person. And so going in the gym, I need like a Celsius before. And you don't want to wake up and chug coffee. No, I agree. I agree with right. you on that. Like yeah. I understand, like if I have a slow morning, great. But if sure. I'm going to wake up and go to the gym, I'm not trying to have coffee before. Yeah. So I'll have a Celsius then. Mm -hmm. Then I, at some point in the day, most likely am feeling left out that I haven't had a coffee yet because I enjoy the taste of coffee. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> sometimes I'm like, you know what? It's 8 p.m. Time for a coffee. Wow. I also like an evening coffee. I should probably start doing half calf or decaf or something like that. Half calf's good. I do that half calf's good. Yeah, yeah, we half went calf's through good. a season where we did that. We just don't have any at the house right now. That's good. Then stuff. a lot of times this is bad, but I've got some kind of energy drink here. And so like four o'clock, three o'clock, I need like a little afternoon to pick me up. Wow. Yeah. So it's, you do uh, it's not yeah. not great. Not terrible, but not great. So what do we think the optimization is of this? We think probably for you, it's Celsius before you work out, coffee at 11. I think what I would like to do is Celsius in the morning and then half-calf at night. I think that would be a good one. And try to not you have any- You like three cups of half-calf though. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can Yeah, maybe like that. a half. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I think that's big. Well, you mentioned Christmas earlier. Yes. I have- an update slash confession, depending Ooh. on what point of life you talk about, but we have some Christmas decorations up. Wow. I have been an adamant post Thanksgiving person, but Obviously last not. year, up until this point in life, adamant about it. But then last year we were only at home like nine days in December. And so, because we were house sitting, we were traveling, it was a bunch of different stuff going on. And so it felt like we did not enjoy Christmas stuff at all. And so Caitlin started begging 
in like October. And I was finally like, you know what? I really enjoy Christmas. I enjoy Christmas decorations. We're going to be leaving like right after Christmas to go spend time with my family. And so we'll take stuff down then. Why not start early? And I felt so like, I'm like, who are you, Jill? Have you You've lost changed. all? Have you lost your entire moral compass here? You've literally changed. I know. Like literally. Literally. Dude, you, I, I'm pretty sure you told me this. Probably. Like, recently. You were like, I can't believe that people would put Christmas decorations up before Thanksgiving. That's, I'm telling you, I feel like a heathen who's trying to to ask for more before I'm thankful for what I have. Dude, I, I tell you what, man, you- I don't even, I look in the mirror and I don't even recognize the man looking back at me. You struggle with contentment. Yeah. Because you always want what's next and what's next is never as good as what previously was. Excess never leads to better things. So aggressive. <laughs> well said. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I needed to let people know because, and I, I still kind of stand by post Thanksgiving though. I, I don't think this is going to be like a thing that goes on in the future. What did Caitlin say? Oh, she was thrilled. She was yeah, like, yeah, you'll have for... it every year now. Yeah. I like gave up a little bit of ground and there's no reclaiming there's it. There's no reclaiming there's no, that. It only, it goes in one direction. There's no, <laughs> no reclaiming Good songs. That. Hey, one a direction. lot of bangers. Uh, talk about contentment <laughs> and not being content. Ooh. I saw this graphic. And so I put it up on the screen came across the Instagram feed of the 2017 Alabama roster and talk about just an embarrassment wow. of riches. So at quarterback, they had Jalen Hurts, Tua, Mac Jones, running back, Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs, Brian Robinson, Damian Harris, then receiver Devontae Smith, Calvin Ridley, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs. Let's see who else is on it. They've got like Three O linemen, a tight end, four defensive linemen. Trayvon Diggs was on this roster. Was he? Yeah. Holy smokey! I mean, dude. that's what, like twenty four players, something like that. More than that. That's freaking thirty players. I don't no, feel... that's twenty four exactly. Is I just it? Counted. Okay. I, I was doing a 12. quick little estimate based off of the shapes. I think it's twelve. Yeah, yeah. on each side um, or on each. But I didn't want to count. Dude, that, I mean, talk about Donald, like, of course they won the national championship, and now they don't have the same talent. Nick Saban cannot coach a football team. Yeah, it's sad that you're looking at this and you're like, but I mean, Mac Jones. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, still a starting NFL quarterback. Yeah. Well, I mean, not for long, but yes. Yeah, not for long. Well, actually, we'll get into that in a minute, but, but got benched. But we are now probably like, what, 20 something minutes in this episode and have said nothing. So that is my yep. fault. But No, it's also, it's also. Yeah. It's also mine. Also, who doesn't want to listen to us talk about nothing? Well, optimization is important, I think. You got to be content. <laughs> Excess never leads to better things. Yeah, one direction. All right. <laughs> so weekly rundown. Uh, Jimbo is can $73 million. Yeah. You don't like guaranteed money for players, but look what coaches get. Million dollars of guaranteed money. Yeah, here's a little $73 million golden parachute for being bad at your job. Why would you ever work? I guess purpose, like, you know, what? what's the difference at the end of the day between like- Oh, it's gotta be pride. Pride or purpose, because it's like, like there's no real difference, to be honest, between like 20 million and 60 million. Like, yes, yeah. I get there's obviously more generational wealth, but like all you could ever want in a lifetime with 10 or 20 million. Mm-hmm. You got to think so, right? Like, what? Well, what do you need now? A private jet? Is that the next like? But I mean, seventy three for doing nothing. But that's what I'm saying. Well, like, my guy has to just sit down. It's the, over. The best part about this, though, but you're right. It was is pride. He's the not the twelfth man foundation donating what was it like 180 million at halftime? Basically, it's like, oh yeah, here's his buyout. Here's the package to go get another coach. We are sick of Jimbo. And honestly, when I was in A and M, everyone was just incredibly over him. But to be How fair, how in the world can they donate that much money so fast? Texas oil money. That's my only explanation. It's got to wow. be right. But but the UT, like the other schools in Texas, don't get this. Yeah, or do they? Because they're pretty nice. They look nice. Anyway, all right. I mean, but they've had just insanely talented rosters and recruiting classes to be performing the way they are. So I get it. Yeah, but. The guaranteed money for coaches is what's wild to me. For players, guaranteed. I get more than coaches. I know that's what I, but what I'm saying is like, are you saying, you, what do you have a bigger problem with? A coach getting it or a player getting it? 
coach. I would say coach. Yeah. I'd agree with you. I mean, I still, I still stand pretty strong. Like I'm all for some guaranteed money for sure. But like, and I get it's a competitive advantage, but still like giving a player over six years guaranteed money, like increasing each year. It's but like, like, if you're a player, you get, they move around the cap. Could, could you like screwed there at the end? Like it's all smoke and mirrors. You don't get paid what, what it looks like because it's all structured and restructured. Then it's like you get hurt and you're done. And then you have a coach that just does a bad job and gets seventy three million. That's a good point. That's yeah, that's, that's the point. part that gets me. I'm with you on that. But that's I, good point. I, I I do get your point on the other side of it. Uh, Taylor and Travis. You saw where she Buenos changed. Aires. She changed the song. Karma is the boy on the cheese. Yeah, coming back home to me or something. Mm, and then she ran into his arms. Romantic. So sexy. Wow. Wow. I almost threw up. <laughs> We should uh, like play a little game to see how many times you could work that into an episode. Oh, yeah. And if, like, there's a phrase that I have to say. <laughs> Actually, uh, that that'd be hilarious. Uh, Bills fired OC Ken Dorsey I, because that I, was an abysmal game, dude. I'm telling you what, what like, and they started off pretty strong. The Bills did in the game. No, not the game. Oh. Just in the season. I was like, they like, fumbled on the first play. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, yeah, no. They, they started off pretty strong in the season, and like, what has happened the last few yeah. weeks, man? Joe Brady's taking over though. I think as interim. Oh, really? and I like him. He yeah. didn't do great with the Panthers, but obviously, he well, did with I mean, he's his last name's Brady. Yeah, I mean, and it's Joe that coached Joe. So, and Joe Buck is a good announcer. Yeah, you got to think about that yeah, too. Yeah. Joe Burrow. I don't know. Then, I, what do you? I, you think it's a Josh Allen thing? I mean, all roads lead to the quarterback, typically, but. Nah, we'll see. We will get into that in a minute, though. Okay. Uh, next up, we had, I don't know if you saw this, but the death, the hockey death, where the player got slashed. I saw with that. His... I didn't yeah, see so this. So Matt though. Petgrave is reportedly arrested for Adam Johnson's death. So I hadn't watched the video, and then today I, I saw it on Twitter. Video. It's, it was from a distance, thankfully, so you can't really like see much, but it looked like he like jumped up and kicked them. Yeah. Like, I didn't know if it was something on the ground or, or how it happened, but um, so That's he's- so sad. Yeah, it's so sad. But he's reportedly, I think they have him um, or they're charging him with manslaughter. Um, wow. So saw that was happening. That's nuts, And then man. in much more exciting news, Patrick Mahomes has confirmed that he wears the same undies <laughs> every game. All it's for his a entire... baseball thing because he grew up playing baseball too. Oh, it's superstitious. It's such a baseball so, thing. <laughs> is it bad that my first thought when I saw this was how much money do you think when he retires those would go for? Oh, yeah, your mind is weird. But but, I, but think about it, though. You think about how much money some people would pay for that. I don't know why, but you know that's one of those weird things. It's like Patrick Mahomes used undies or like good luck undies go for $250 million. Like it would be crazy. And then like one billionaire has it in his house. It's like Patrick Mahomes underwear. And it's yeah, it's like, like, like I'm a billionaire who is like has too much money and is like turned into a sick freak. And now I'm going to buy this man's yeast yeah. undies. Anyway, but Patrick Mahomes, I mean, keep wearing it, right? Wear the same socks while you're at it. Now, the question I have, mm -hmm. does I assume he washes those every week? Or if I he assume. plays well, he doesn't. I, I mean, I assume, no, you can't play. Uh, I don't think you can play like 50, 60 football games without washing them no but and, do you like uh, if he plays well do you just like i mean maybe week to week but you know what i mean like 50 ga football games with that he is unwell yeah yeah think about yeah. what would be growing down i mean there. i used to wear the same slide shorts was that because you just had one pair because that's what happened to me <laughs> i only had two i think but yeah i'm assuming they're compressions but who knows? i would imagine who, I would knows? Imagine. who knows how tightly they knows? hug yeah so is it like the eagles g-string guy <laughs> Uh, dude, the Eagles, <laughs> Any comment? I mean, no. We'll get into it, but this was a record-setting week for NFL Week 10. They were the most game-winning drives oh, as time expired. let's go. And that was even before. Hokies. That was even before uh, Monday night. So Sunday alone, there were five field goals, like fi five game-winning field goals that went through as time expired, and then there was another one on Monday night. So five was the record, and then six just added to it, icing on the cake. But Iceman, let's hit it. Iceman. What's up, everybody? This week's Unsung Hero is Dream On Shades 3. Nice. Dream On 3 is a nonprofit organization that works with uh, kids with intellectual disabilities and other healthcare concerns and special needs to help make their athletic dreams come true. 
So right here in Columbia, South Carolina, the University of South Carolina, along with some of its student athletes He's that driving. are partnered with this organization, help make part. the dream come true of Rutledge Snipes. Rutledge is also my nephew, and I'm so proud of him and his Ooh. family. Rut, man. His sisters, Macy and Sadie, were included in on his dream, and they picked him up at his house on Friday morning to take him in a limousine on a shopping spree. But it didn't stop there. For every seven-year-old kid, what do you want? You want all the Legos you can put your hands on. And so it's exactly what Rutledge did. He got all the Legos he could put his hands on at Target. And his sisters got to throw a bunch of stuff in the cart. So they were included in on the dream. But on Saturday, even in the rain, they took him to the South Carolina football game where he had on the field passes for warmups. Got to take pictures with the human Kai Light reel himself, Kai Kroger and uh, got to be there as the captains walk out, as the team ran out. And then they had front row 50 yard line right behind the bench seats to take in the entire game. Obviously, they had to have go stay somewhere. So Dream On 3 also put them up in an incredible hotel, all expenses paid, things on wow. file so they could eat all the food they wanted, uh, watch any movies or just hang out and do whatever else. They spared no expense. And Dream On 3 is an organization, if you want to dive into them, I highly encourage you to. They are uh, in several states across the Southeast and Colorado. And the work they do for these families is just above reproach. It's be above and beyond anything these kids could ever ask for. And it's just a really cool experience to watch. Uh, we're gonna add some photos in and a little bit of video so y'all can appreciate just how fired up little Rutman was this weekend and his family. And uh, it needs to just be said that places like Dream On 3, these organizations deserve our praise, deserve our support. And for that, you're this week's Unsung Hero. Nice. That's yeah. his nephew? Yeah. It's my uh, cousin's kid. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, it was really fun following, like, just because oh, okay. they were posting everything, and uh, it looked awesome. Dude, that's just, awesome. Yeah. So, you got to walk out of the field? Got to walk out. Um, I guess be there as the players got in. Take pictures of a bunch of different people go on the shopping spree they had like That's a sweet so cool. hotel there was like a ton of balloons and everything and it looked awesome but we will definitely throw the dream on three link in the bio not cool. link in the bio it's not instagram we'll <laughs> link in the show notes that's what podcasters say uh anyway if you want to check it out which i would encourage but heck yeah heck yeah you know what we gotta touch on first yeah go ahead no no, no set it up i want you to <laughs> set it up hype me up hype me up I mean, are the 49ers back? I don't know. 34-3 over the team that you had ranked third is not that good. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, that's embarrassing. I mean, it's not bad. It's, it I mean, they, but they also did that to the Cowboys, too. So The Cowboys aren't good. They suck, though. The Eagles barely beat them. Anyway, first <laughs> up, uh, CMC was on Bus with the Boys today. <laughs> I had to throw he? this clip in because everyone's been talking about Brock Purdy. Everyone waited and threw their shots in. It's like, told you. I was telling you that I was looking on Twitter and people were like, yeah, they're regretting the Trey Lance trade. He's showing why he's drafted last overall. And so to set this up, Taylor Lewan was on the Kay Adams show, I guess like two or so weeks ago. And was saying that he heard from an anonymous source that Brock Purdy's not all that. And then once like game films out on him, Teams are going to know how to beat him. So you bring up somebody. You said Brock Purdy threw a dime. I don't know if you've heard some news reports, but there are people saying Brock Purdy's not the guy. Do you think this was a. Yeah, no, I heard that from an anonymous source. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really hear that from, you know, a relevant source. Yes. So. Yeah, that. Okay, I see what you did there. And that's understandable. Taylor. Yes, sir. Anonymous reporting? Is this TMZ? Dog, this is. <laughs> Oh, but I had to give him a little dude. hard time. But this is this the part right here. TMZ, listen. This last game, I mean, you can you can see what Brock Purdy's done. But you, I mean, look at the last. We're talking since he's gotten in the in the ball game. I don't disagree. The guy's been a stud, right? And yeah. I don't know all the stats, but he's got the stats to 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 show it. The QBR, the completion percentage, the completion under pressure, all that. Guy's done nothing but ball out. I mean, you had to wait a long time to drop that. I mean, Brock's played. I don't know how calling. many games. he's been phenomenal it's there's always more that goes into it like i know for me there's been times where i i might have been off on the timing that leads to a pick or like guy's not in the right spot leads to big and brock's always going to put it on his shoulders it's kind of guy he is but it's just too easy to wait till someone fails to be like i told you so i love a couple things about this one you gotta love anyone standing up for their quarterback two oh, yeah for sure i love for how sure. he's bringing up it's like everyone loves 
to point out quarterbacks throwing picks, like you're saying, everything comes back to quarterbacks. Like we saw in the Bills game, we'll get into in a minute, but like literally a pick that bounces off Gabe Davis's hands. Oh and like, yeah. And then like Christian McCaffrey <laughs> saying, it's like the timing is everything in the NFL. Like so one of the reasons I love like Fred Warner is he's like so good at like getting like a rub on like a cross or something that just like knocks the timing off. And then like your progress, your progressions off, then like everything falls apart on a play. And, and he's like, yeah, like if I'm not at the right spot at the right time, that leads to a pick. Yeah. I don't know why, but it felt like a large percentage of people were just waiting on Brock Purdy to fail because it, in my opinion, is because it like disrupted the model. Right. And like most people, I'm not saying you, cause like we've had good conversations about it, but like most people couldn't handle that. They're like, no, Trevor Lawrence is the answer and Brock Purdy's not. And Brock Purdy in this right. game, he threw for 296 yards, three touchdowns, zero picks with 148.9 passer rating. He did look good. He played wow. He really did. And he needed, like I said, he, they he, they needed a good win. And boy, they did get a good win. Their defense played unbelievable. Purdy th- had some great throws. McCaffrey, our guy, didn't score, which I was know. the only the only downside about, in your opinion, has to be the only downside about that game. I mean, you probably were watching that throwing up on the side. Oh. Just like Trevor Lawrence. Not throw up. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence is not playing well. Purdy's I mean, throwing dimes. So here's here's the thing. One, I was telling you, they're going to come off the bye. They're going to be fine. 49ers got I was Chase like the, Young now. I was like, there's literally no question in my mind if they're going to cover. Obviously, there is a question because of sports and especially when you care about a team. But like, I yeah. was very confident that they were going to come back firing all cylinders. And they did. And the thing, two, well, I want to get into the game a little bit more, but a couple questions. One, the Jags are now in the exact same category as the Dolphins. Yeah, they no, right. they have had like some upside, but they just haven't beaten good teams. And then on top of it, they haven't blown out teams on offense like the the Dolphins have. So it's like they've had good games. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, well, and I think during the season, there's there's obviously every game is important in the NFL season. There's only seventeen of them, but there's certain weeks that are pivotal or pivotal, pivotal, pivotal <laughs> <laughs> that that are pivotal. <laughs> Pivotal. Pivotal. For pivotal. Th- that are important. More important than other games. Are pivotal. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, there, there are games that are more important, obviously, in the 17-week schedule. And like Jacksonville coming up against San Francisco, who's lost three straight, and just getting dogged yeah. by San Francisco. Like, yes, good win by San Francisco. You got to have some deflated confidence as the Jaguars, though. Yeah. That's why I think some of these games are so big. Like when the Ravens lost the Browns, which the Browns are a good football team. Yeah. No doubt. But the Ravens play the Bengals on Thursday night upcoming. And it's like if the Bengals lose this game, I'm not going to completely write them off. But if they lose against the Ravens, it's one of the pivotal games that if they do lose, they're almost kind of out of it. Where it's like the Jags, you felt like, I mean, if they would have competed, it'd be a little bit of a different story. And you have games where you just get blown out. What are you talking about? The Ravens losing to the Browns or the Bengals falling to the Texans? No, I'm talking about this upcoming Thursday when the Bengals play. But you were talking about like on the Sunday. Are you saying, because to me, that impacted the the Bengals losing the Texans is what's really tough because the Bengals have a very tough year like rest of the season schedule-wise. They do. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If the Bengals lose this one, I mean, confidence has got to be pretty much gone from the organization from like a It's like competing. you got a spark and then it went Correct. out. Correct. And so it's like, I think that's kind of what just happened with Jacksonville where it's like they had a great start to the year mm-hmm. and then just to get absolutely pounded by, I think it's just tough to come back from as an as a team for that season. Yeah. I mean, I it's think It's one so. thing to compete and lose the game. Right. It's and, a whole nother thing to be just outplayed in every factor. Which is, and this is why if I try, which I know I can't, but if I try to reduce my bias for San Francisco on this, why I'm very high on them as a team, it's like they had the three-game skid and things just felt like they were unraveling, like get to the bye. They weren't getting blown out, but they just weren't winning. Yeah. Their two biggest games were the Cowboys coming in, which was people had the Cowboys in the top five, top three a lot of the time at that point. And then the Jaguars coming, or they went to the Jaguars. They played like a 10 a.m. game for them in Jacksonville. And both games starters were out in the fourth quarter. It's like any big opportunity yeah. they've had, they not only like rose to the occasion, they dominated the teams. So much so that both teams afterwards, it's like, well, the Cowboys are frauds. Well, the the, the Jaguars are frauds. It's like they beat the good teams that bad that everyone's questioning them. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's oh, big to well, me. Yeah, the, the, the losses weren't 
great. Oh, well, either. their losses. But what I mean is like they weren't like blown out. The Bengals no, was the yeah. closest one, but even that, it was like towards the end of the game and, and came back. What yeah. I wanted, uh, a couple plays I wanted to highlight though. Uh, I already mentioned Brock Purdy going off, but this throw I to saw Kittle. This throw, yeah, this is just nuts. With literally a man in his face throws a dot uh, that was to a, George yeah, Kittle. That was a dime. Yeah, that, I mean, and you know, 13 3, third quarter, throw that. I mean, then it's 21 or 23, and it's like, it's getting out of it's hand pretty quick. Getting out of hand quick. And then defensively, you already mentioned it, but with Chase Young and Bosa, I love this sack because. Dude, it's I mean, disgusting. It's just cool to come up. But yeah, I mean. It's not even f- like. Four Niners already had one of the best defenses in the league, and then you get one of the best pass rushers in the league on top of it. Well, so now you have two incredible edges. Yeah. And then you have, you can now you bring heat with four, yeah. which opens up everything. You get someone like Fred Warner. It makes that can everyone hold down else the middle. better. It really does. And uh, I mean, we saw it this week. They held, and the Jaguars have not been as good as they could be this year. I would say ETN's played really well, so I don't want to discredit him yeah. at all. But still, they're, they're a good offense, and they were held to Three 221 points. yards, four takeaways, Five sacks. Manning curse lives on. You're right. Yeah. It does. Well, um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, and I hope for the Jaguars' sake, they don't, you know, lose all confidence here and, and they come back and, and still be a playoff contender. But that was also, it, I mean, it wasn't a trap game for the Jags, but I mean. Yeah. That's not a trap game. Huh? That's not a trap game. It's not, like I said, it's not a trap game, but with the 49ers losing three straight coming off a bye, you got to think in their eyes, this is like, I got to win this football game. They were playing against a team that was going to be that was very extra hungry. Focused. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I was thinking you were meaning more of like a trap game in the sense of a game that they overlook. I'm like they, nah. they weren't. No, they're not game. overlooking it, but it's like they also, you know, like like you said, if they caught mm-hmm. it before the bye, it might have been a whole different. Yeah. And you know, they had two weeks to prepare for the Jacks essentially. So. And you mentioned earlier, but CMC he had a hundred yards of or over a hundred scrimmage yep. yards, but no touchdown, and so he ends. Ends his streak in consecutive right? games. Yeah, so he's tied at 17. Would have been 18 if oh, he'd gotten gosh. it. Um, they tried in the fourth to give him a little bit of action uh, with the starters out, but the yeah. defense held up. So Let's go. The best was the way he responded afterwards. He's like, yeah, I suck. Everyone <laughs> else scored. <laughs> That's funny. Well, the one game I want to talk about is like, we'll talk obviously talk about a couple, but the Houston-Cincinnati game. A couple thoughts here. You know, Cincinnati's defense... Just a little disappointing. I mean, I thought their offense played pretty well yeah. overall. I, I was just disappointed with the Bengals' defense. You, you mean as, giving up 544 yards? That's correct. Is, isn't good? Well, that's correct. Yeah. You know what the crazy part is, though? What? I mean, the Bengals tied it up with, what, two minutes ago, and then C.J. Shroud drives them down, and they kick a field goal. Of course, the Bengals' defense just can't do anything. But... It's like it's kind of like what you said with with Brock Purdy. It's like Stroud threw an awful interception to let the Bengals score. Mm-hmm. Like one of the worst decisions you can make as a QB in the NFL. Like right. it was a bad pathetic pick. interception. Like especially in that like that time, mm-hmm. you, like, you can't. That's you just can't do that. And obviously that's some of the rookie coming out for sure. But but then he let him down to score three, and it's all good, mm-hmm. you know. But if if they lose that football game. That's a whole different storyline. Right. But, and that's where I'm like, as a rookie, you expect him to make some. You don't want him to. And But at the end right. of the day, I mean, he, it's now his second consecutive week with a game-winning drive. So. It is. I don't know if you saw this play. This looked like a recess backyard football game. He dances around, spins. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? And then somehow he finds a man downfield and hits him. I yeah. don't even know how he was looking in that direction. I have no idea. Much less hits him. Dude, CJ Stroud, I mean, Panthers fans like Dude. myself are just hitting the air. It's uh, no punching. I'm telling air. you, the Panthers would have ruined him. I, I can almost guarantee you if they you switched. So? I and this is not even me comparing Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. This is me talking about the Texans versus the Panthers. Yeah. I think if the picks were switched, Bryce Young would be going off. Maybe not as much, but still would be going off for the Texans and CJ or CJ Stroud would be struggling. You think it's that big of a difference? To, yeah. Yeah. I think culture at both places is very different. I think, I mean, I'm a joke about it, but I do think that Tepper is ruining the Panthers. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's not like a long, it's a expansion team. Yeah, it's not like a give, long franchise, but. And we give Frank, I give Frank Reich a lot of flack for sure. But, 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 but also if, 
again, I, we could be wrong in temper. I don't think I am. But if you have a boss, it's, you know, like micromanaging you, telling you like breathing down your neck, obviously that's going to infect your performance. hundred percent. And so there, it could be that there are stuff that we are attributing that we attributed to Matt rule. And that maybe we're attributing to Frank Wright that are all Tepper's fault. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, who knows? It's so frustrating. Frank Reich has had some success. Like, yes, he had like... We, I mean, we didn't want the hire, but... No, but he is, I guess, he was more proven, right, than Steve Wilkes. Yes, he uh, he won a Super Bowl with Nick Foles, right, as the offensive and coordinator. And he was like the first Panthers quarterback. That's Yeah, so, fun. I mean, he, he has an off, quote-unquote offensive mind, but like, dude, the play calling I'm seeing from the Panthers, like... I know. They won't let Bryce Young throw a football longer than six yards. I don't know if that's a Bryce Young thing, or I don't know if that's the play it's call thing. It's also not a great line, so. But, so they're just trying to get it out quick. It's like Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow came to the league. He was throwing a bunch of, you know. No, I mean, I like, I also like D'Amico Ryan, too. So that's yeah. the other comparison getting brought in. But since yeah. you mentioned it, Panthers-Bears game, I don't even just talk about. gross. Just, but the only thing I will say is this is in my bad, horrible category. The Panthers destroyed themselves with penalties. Mm-hmm. Bryce Young led them on what looked like might be a promising drive. And then they kept like taking a step forward and a half a step back yeah. and then another half step back. And it was just, it was tough to watch. It was not tough as bad to as watch. Sunday morning though. That's true. That was the perfect cap off for the international the first game. two games of the week, the Panthers oh. bears and the Colts, New England in Germany, 10, six game, super high scoring affair. This is, I guess, in the ugly category, unless you don't like the Patriots. Um, one, it could just be the Patriots, but then also Mac Jones's interception was terrible. He gets bench. Yeah. Then Bailey Zappi does the fake, fake spike and throws an awful pick. Then I'm like, dude, the Patriots. It is bleak looking for the Patriots. Yeah, I don't even want to talk about any of those games. No. What I will say is Minnesota. I mean, is Josh Dobbs the answer? Like, is Minnesota a legit playoff team? Dude, so they have now won five straight without Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson together. Like that combo. Isn't that insane? They're just a good football team. They're looking good. Hawkinson's also an animal, though. Yeah, he, he had a great an game. And he's your guy. Your dad, though, is too good at fantasy. I know. I think Josh Joshua Dobbs, man, he's got some confidence. Dude, yeah, right the now. Dobbs magic continued. He had 268 yards, a touchdown, 44 rushing yards, another sure. touchdown on the ground. I mean, look at this one right here. Look at this guy. Right. He's moving around. Oh, 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 nope, we're good. Oh. Take flight. <laughs> and then do you oh, see his TikTok man. afterwards? Uh. Look at this. No way. Is he gonna is he gonna do it? Is, is, yes, 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 yes. Can you take me higher? <laughs> Who is that? Uh, Josh Dobbs posted on his TikTok afterwards. That's so good, though. But, dude, I love that Creed's making a comeback. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, uh, dude, that is perfect. Because the Rangers obviously doing it. Uh, Vikings doing it. I mean, I'm here for it. I love it. The whole Texas trip, made, we were just that, jamming to it. That made my evening. I love it. That's a great TikTok. Um. So, yeah. I, I like the Vikings. I like what I'm yeah, seeing. From I like them. the Vikings. I, last thing I want to touch on, unless you want to touch on one or two more things, is the obviously Baltimore Cleveland game. Like, yeah. Are we just overlooking the Browns this year? Uh, I'm not, because I had them at top ten and I have them moving up. I think they're a yeah. great team. Yeah. I do not like saying it because I don't like Deshaun Watson because I have principles. I'm a South Carolina fan, obviously. <laughs> but. Uh, they have an amazing defense. Yeah. Even with PJ Walker, they were still like getting some Pretty games good, done. Yeah. I'm not saying they're a Super Bowl contender, but I think they're I think yeah. they're gonna finish a top ten team. Yeah. The AFC North though, that division is looking tough. Disgusting. Disgusting. Makes I was like, can all four out. teams go? <laughs> Number three, well done. <laughs> if all four teams go, that would be insane. <laughs> I mean it feels like they could. I don't think it's possible. I don't think it's possible. Because you have but... two wild cards, right? There's three now. Oh, could be three. Um, I was playing Madden 18 the other day, and it was two. I redownload Madden 18. And I have a franchise. Yeah, so it's six right now, three in each time. That's would, I thought about it the other day. You would actually laugh because I I saw on my PlayStation that I bought Madden 18 like five years ago and yeah. downloaded it in college or something or right after college, and I was like, huh? Hmm. I redownloaded it. 
I started a franchise. I got Pat Mahomes as a, as the rookie QB, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey as the rookie running back, Cooper Cup as the rookie wide. So I got all these guys dirt cheap, but they're like, you know, I'm upgrading the piss out of them. One of my favorite things is like redrafts. I think that would be so fun to do to like go back and redraft all the years. Like, and like the see, fantasy draft? Or, or no, like um the actual NFL drafts and see like where players oh. would have ended up if yeah. you know, like if Patrick Mahomes was the number one overall pick, if oh, all these yeah. people Yeah, I know. Um, wow, do you play Madden still? So I have my friend's old PS3 that I should bust out, but I, I've never PS3? Oh yeah, that was an upgrade. I was a PS2 guy, like a 2001. I'm not a huge video game guy. I like it. I like sports I'll prediction bring over games. My PS4. Yeah, what we need to do is do like like come over before Sunday and we can do the Chiefs Eagles prediction game. Ooh. Stuff like that's fun. And then we can actually play like a live stream it on, yeah. on Twitch. Uh okay, quick hits on a few other Maybe things we'll I want to mention. Off. I want to throw up. Uh <laughs> so already mentioned it, but there were a lot of close games. The Browns, Ravens ended with a field goal as time yep, expired which was awesome the houston uh cincinnati game ended with a field goal as time expired yeah detroit first chargers ended as with a field goal as yep. time expired then la or not la sorry um atlanta and arizona's then washington's and seattle's and then denver's and uh buffalo so already I can't on five denver beat buffalo yeah so i'm gonna i want to touch on Is that denver game for the real deal well yeah so let's jump right there <laughs> denver has looked different they're not i'm not saying they're real they're the real deal but they look different since they the blowout from the doofy. dolphins they're starting to click a couple things i wanted to mention in that game one the bills started off super hot fumbling the first play that yeah. was tough then the interception off of um gabe davis's hand so did, that's did you see that completely yeah on gabe davis i mean like yeah, like oh my gosh i think it almost hits both hands then helmet perhaps uh so that one was tough but Russell Wilson. Oh, and that happened in the Bengals game. Not a pick, but dude, Burrow. I don't know if you saw this. So I, I just remember this because I was watching <laughs> the Bengals game. I was so pissed off because Tyler Boyd. Uh huh. It was when Joe Burrow. Uh, it was they were down by three. It was 27-24 Texans. Burrow takes them all the way down the field. It's third and goal on the fourteen or something. <laughs> He runs a little like, you know, up right, up and to the left. He throws it right here to Tyler Boyd and it goes through his hands. He was in the end zone. Yeah. So like they had to kick a field goal and they lost. They were talking about this and I was watching the Manning cast. And it was when Patrick Mahomes it. was on. So I love uh, it when I love it uh, when it's the two of them. I know. Hold on. I know. I love it when it's the two of them or if it's another NFL player, especially a quarterback, because yeah. then I find it like really interesting. Uh, but they were complaining about the drop and they're like, you're not allowed to drop on third down. And Patrick Mahomes is just silent. And I'm like, it's got to be because all of his receivers are just dropping stuff all year. He's like, I will say, can say nothing about drops. Please catch the next Kelsey, one. Kelsey, you. Kelsey, and catch oh, that yeah. football. He's locked in. But he catches so, a lot of things. Got a shout out, Wilson. Russell Wilson looked good here. He did look good. Yeah. Uh, but Portland Sutton on this catch. So Ridiculous. he spins around. Again, Ooh. another one. And then throws an absolute dot right here. Look at this. Then that catch, the sideline awareness. serious? That was one of the best plays I've seen this year. 100%. Dude, his catch. The catch, like Cortland Sutton's catch was incredible. And then Russell Wilson was incredible on this the play. The body control? People don't like to say it. And yeah, he's not getting a ton of yards. But Russell Wilson's not playing bad this year. He's he's playing better than he was last year. That's for sure. We he's playing a lot that. better. He's getting. Yeah. I'm not saying he's old for him yet, but he's getting like he's in the top half of the league at quarterback. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. With that. Um, but people don't want to don't want to talk about that. Yeah, we should trade for him. We should, we should trade for him. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, last thing on that game, when it was back and forth at the end. Do you see James Cooks a uh, James Cooks fumble bounce uh -huh. dribble off of it? So right after the Broncos score. Runs down the field. Check this out. He comes up, busts the run, fumbles it, picks it back up, takes it 29 more yards. I was like, are you kidding? I thought he was going to fumble again. How funny would that be? You fumbled twice in one play. Has that ever happened? I'm sure it has. That's nuts. Yeah. They end up scoring. Josh Allen gets in on the end zone. And then they were, so they had a one point lead of the Broncos. Broncos started to drive back. 
then gets sacked out of field goal range, throws it up in the pass interference. I'm like, what? what's happening? They're about to win. Then they tried to do a mayday field goal, like as time expired, and then pushed it right. But then the Bills had 12 men on. I was like, what's happening? And then, sloppy, yes, it was another sloppy. field goal as Five? time expired. Wow. Then, real quick, Lamar Jackson's pick six was tough. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was. What do you think about Lamar? I think it's good. I just think that that was not good situational football. Yeah. Um, but then again, it was also batted up. So I'm not, it wasn't like a it terrible was. interception, that but was. still it's, it's, that's a tough one right there. The Jets Raiders game, bad. Yeah, bad. It was what we expected. Zach Wilson, bad. But the last- This would have went, dude. Last play of the game, he has this? Max Crosby barreling down on him. He evades him, runs out. <laughs> then on the run, launches it up. And it's almost caught. It is. Can you imagine if that would have been caught? If that, if that, if that's caught, the Jets win the Super Bowl. It's like just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this and totally redeem yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, the Jets fans are. Is he the answer? <laughs> is he Zach Wilson? You know what? Aaron Rodgers is probably going to be back next week. But trade him. Uh, Trade him and let's start Zach. Dude, I hope Aaron, he won't come back. But uh, oh, Anyway, finish. the last game, though, high-scoring affair between the Chargers and the Lions. Yeah. because So Justin Herbert threw that pick early on the 33-yard line. Then the, the Chargers defense held back and forth. It was like no defense could stop. I was stop. about to say, yeah. Which I wanted to call out like Dan Campbell's call to go for it on the last drive. Fourth and two. And instead of kicking the field goal, he decides to go for it and then kick a field goal as time expired, which was one of the most ballsy calls I've seen. He's a ballsy coach, though. He is a ballsy all, all coach. All. He does. He is but also, it's coach. like you. there's no stopping each other on defense. So yeah. it's not a terrible decision there. Especially when the game's 41-38 or whatever it was. It was 38-38 at, yeah, at the time. Yeah, so it's like you're overtime. I mean, I don't know. It was interesting. Herbert threw for 323 yards, four touchdowns, one pick. Keenan Allen had 175 yards. And they were both going against you. And I had Keenan Allen in my other league, so I'm like, too good, but not too good. Yeah, I hate and that he did feeling. well. But he did too good. Yeah, he did well, man. Uh, Jared Goff, 333, two touchdowns. Amon Ross St. Brown, 156 yards a touchdown. And then we talked about it. We're like, how will Gibbs and Montgomery, how's the balance going to be? Gibbs, two that touchdowns. That was sexy. They combined for 193 yards and three touchdowns, 30, 35 more yards on the air. That's so sexy. I mean, think about Rough. it. Rough. Rough, 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 rough. You're gonna get mad at me, but I just traded Gibbs for Tyree Kale straight up. Who'd you get it from? No, I'm kidding. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm thinking about throwing him Gibbs and like a solid wide receiver though for Tyree Kale. Gibbs not, is hot right now. I'm gonna I'm poach Tyree Kale. I'm gonna get him. No, no. I've got to reinforce before the playoffs if I even. Dude, make I it got so point. lucky because Nick's whole team is the Dolphins and they had a bye. Yeah, I got lucky there. You did get lucky. Well, I picked up Josh Dobbs because I have Pat I Mahomes. Saw that. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to ride with him. And Play he played low. well. Played well. Played well. Uh, all right. Power rankings time. You want to hit it first? Dude, I am so indecisive about these power rankings. I am riding with them. The Bengals at 10. But I actually have them. <laughs> You're all over the place with the Bengals. You put it in when it makes I no do, sense. I and then the one week that it makes sense, you take them out. Dude, I can't predict the Bengals at all. But I'm going to go Bengals oh at 10, and I pick them to beat the Ravens. Anyway, okay. Jaguars, I think, drop all the way down to nine, in my opinion. I got them at 10. Yeah. I mean, I, I had them high, what, three or four last week. But, I mean, they look like they shouldn't even play varsity football. Cleveland Browns at eight. Once again, solid team. Almost put them at seven. But then I put Cowboys at seven. Now I'm thinking about it, I kind of like Browns at seven. Anyway, well, who cares? We'll keep going. Dolphins at six. I think that's a kind of a fair spot for the Dolphins. My next three picks are interchangeable. The 49ers, Ravens, and Lions. I think you could arguably put any in any of those three, and it makes sense. Um, I like the Ravens at five mm -hmm. with the loss. I'm going to put the 49ers at four, which is higher than I want to, but they look great against the Jags. Why higher than you want to? Well, just because they've lost three out of the last four. But look at the total record and look at their last game. 
Look at them coming back after the bye. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And they're good football. I'm not saying they're not a good right, football okay, team, but okay. it's tough to put them at. Anyway, I put them at four. I still have the Lions at three. Okay. I I think with Gibbs and Montgomery coming back, if they can figure out their defense a little bit, like if they mm-hmm. could just figure out their defense a little more, I think uh, I think they're a top five football team. And then Chiefs, Eagles, wrap it up. All right. It's not incredibly different. I've got 11. I'm going to go 11 real quick. The Houston Texans. Fair enough. They, they're they getting close to the top 10. I think they're a playoff team. I'm high on D'Amico, high on C.J. Stroud. I If I could do a split 10, I would put them in there. Okay. But I think right now they're just outside. And there's a few teams that are just outside, okay. but I wanted to mention the Texans. Panthers. Then, yeah, they're just outside of 32. They're at like 33. <laughs> They need to be an expansion, not Yeah, franchise. it's because they're going to have a number one overall pick, but yeah. then not have that number one overall pick. So that's why they're below. They got relegated. At least they got Brescia. Um, 10 jacks. So. Wow. Yeah. The reason they dropped all the way to 10 is because I I had them high at four, I think, last week. You did? No, no, no. I had them at five because okay. I had them behind the 49ers. I felt like. They were higher than I wanted to keep them, but they just kept winning. So, I, you know what I mean? Like kind of what you're saying with the 49ers, I had inflated them because they kept winning. But if you look at their season, they they only have big wins against the Steelers and Bills, which neither yeah. one of those teams are in the yeah. top 10. Like those are their most notable games. They haven't had a hard schedule. Then yeah. when they actually get a chance against the Niners, they get blown out. It's coming off a bye. They have two weeks to prepare for it. Uh, yes, I think the Niners are that good. So I'm not going to hold it too much against them. But they're now in the same categories as the Dolphins and the Cowboys. Like yeah. they haven't beaten anyone. Good point. Yeah. And so they're six and three. Um, it's also, to me, I think that seven through 10 are interchangeable. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, agreed. So that's where I feel it too. It's like, yeah, that dropped lower. But then if I look at each one, it's like, okay. It's like, okay, nine, I have Seahawks. They're also six and three, just like the Jags. Uh, you but mean they. Eight? No, because uh, 11 was the Texans. So 11, oh. 11 Texans, 10 Jags, oh, okay. and then nine I've got the Seahawks because they're six and three, just like the Jags, but they have actually beaten the Browns and the Lions. Mm. So it's like if I look at the two of them, it's like their wins are better than the Jags. Good point. But there's, it's interesting. It's like when I look at the Seahawks, I'm just not quite convinced. I know. I'm not either. I don't know why. It's like they're getting the job done, but they don't look like that good of a team. Yeah. So Who knows? anyway, I've got Cowboys at eight. I'm going to be honest. I'm just exhausted with the Cowboys. I'm tired of them too. They get, they blow out bad teams, then play horrible situational football in the times that matter, like the Eagles game. They get blown out by the 49ers. It's, it's I don't know. I'm just like, what you do? like you're not going to, you haven't won any good games. And then you're trying to like run up the score against the Giants. That's not, that's not doing it for Congratulations. me. Congratulations. Congratulations. Luckily, the playoffs are point differential. I mean, good job, Dak, for getting 400 yards and four touchdowns. That's a good game. It's still yeah. an NFL team, but it's not enough to put you in the top five. Great. <laughs> then seven, I've got the Browns. Okay. So it's interesting. This is almost higher than I want them to be. But if I look at the teams and like rank them off of each other, I'm like, yeah, I think they're better than the Cowboys, Seahawks, and Jags. Um. They had a big win versus the Ravens, and they looked good. With, they beat the Niners, too. Um, they handled the Titans. Bengals cards like blew yeah. out those teams. Their defense is good. Offense is starting to look dangerous. It feels like seven kind of makes sense for them. And then six Dolphins. Mm-hmm. It's everything we've been talking about with them. They've still got a really high ceiling, high-powered offense, but haven't been a good team. So, again, that's what I'm saying. Like six through ten mm-hmm. are pretty much interchangeable at this point. Then five. I've got the Lions here. So they're seven and two. But they got blown out by the Ravens, so I couldn't, in good conscience, put conscience, conscious, 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 unconscious, put them above the Ravens. Um, then the Ravens was a tough loss to the Browns, but I have the Browns at seven, so clearly they're a good team in my opinion. Um, and that they've blown out some good teams, and they also haven't been blown out, which is like the Cowboys; they've gotten blown out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jags gotten blown out, so that's one of the differentiators for the Ravens. I think they're going to be in the AFC Championship with the Chiefs. Ooh. I think it's what's going to happen there. But anyway, I don't hate that call. Uh, three, Stop. I've got the Niners. They're healthy. They look good. They had that skid, but they looked like a completely different team on that skid and then outside of it. And then even when they looked like the shell of themselves, they still were just barely losing games. Mm-hmm. It's like 
they're bad. <laughs> if you look at this, it's like they they got two opportunities with the Cowboys and the Jags, and their starters were out in the fourth for both those games. They're, they're dominant. Then Chiefs, right now I have them behind the Eagles. I know that they're favored in Kansas City and Arrowhead against them, but I honestly, like, I'm not too sure. I'm very excited about this game coming up. I think it's going to be a good game. I do too. I'm rematch. excited about it. Uh, right now I've got Chiefs 2, Eagles 1. Uh, Eagles have looked better this year. Chiefs have not looked super impressive, but mm -hmm. no, no, we'll see. We'll see what That'll happens. That'll be a good game. Yeah. I'm excited for that game. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think the Eagles, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a six touchdown, you know, affair. <laughs> Win or affair? affair. You remember when you made the crazy call in the playoffs? The that hit? was nuts. That was nuts. That hit though too. That hit hard. Can you imagine if I if I doubled down on what I said and put like a thousand bucks on it? Well, it was against the Giants, right? Yeah, because it was it was. The... No. Was it? The Giants win the wild card. Yeah, because you remember they played the Vikings and we picked the Vikings and everyone was super mad about us oh, picking them. Oh, so pissed off! You're right. And so you're yeah. like, I'm gonna double down on them. Picks. Should we do it? Oh. So I mean, I'm gonna go five and what I tell you, you come in, you're like, I'm going five and I was like, that means you curse yourself, you're done for, it. and One you and you evaded the over five because the yeah you had um, Detroit minus two and a half and it was a three point game, so good luck, good job, thanks man. Uh, but you're 21, 28 in the year. I. The, the the one where I moved the line and picked the Seahawks money line and then Titans plus four and a half. Titans just didn't show up. So that one yeah. didn't hit. Um, and then Bengals, obviously, we both had that, so yeah. it didn't hit. So right now I'm 26 and 24 and you are 21 and 28. But what you got looking into week 11? Also, I've realized I bet with my heart. and <laughs> good. That, good thing you didn't bet with money too. I know. And that could be a good thing or it can be a great uh, thing. Or a... <laughs> yeah, sure. So here's my heart. You ready? You want to yeah. hear what my heart has well, to say yeah. this week? What's your heart on? Bengals plus say? three and a half. Bengals yeah. plus three and a half all day. I'm not confident at all about this, but I, I I'm have, not confident either way though. But that's correct. I'm because I, I was thinking about doing the Ravens minus three and a half, but then I go, it's a must win game for the Bengals. Like the Bengals realize like they have to win this football game. But check this. Monday night was a must win for the Bills against the Broncos. And they're out. But Joe Burrow is is by far a better top five QB than Josh Allen. Josh Allen's an overrated. He's like, he might like be a solid position or two positions above him. Yeah. Exactly. And that matters a lot. Man. I love how you try to make this an argument. <laughs> Eagles plus two and a half cover. I think they go into the Chiefs and they barely sneak it out again like it's they plus have. three now. So I, because I, I locked it in plus three too. So I'll give you plus three on it. Oh, cool. We'll take plus three. Yeah. Even better. <laughs> I'm taking their money line anyway with my, my hard earned cash. <laughs> Not really. Cowboys minus 11 versus the Panthers. I'm actually thinking about putting a lot of money on this game. <laughs> like, dude, are you kidding me? Cowboys minus 11? I mean, the Cowboys have blown out. I mean, they lost the Cardinals, but whatever. They blown out a lot of teams. And the Panthers, I mean, this is this is ripe for 38 to 6 victory. It is it is begging for it right now. Anyway, Cowboys cover that 11 point spread. Texans cover the four and a half against the Cardinals. Kyler, Kyler Murray obviously is a boost to the Cardinals right now. But CJ Stroud and the Texans are so, so sexy right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are the NFL's sexiest team, I would say. You have to admit that, arguably. And then finally, number five to cap it. I got two blowouts this week. I got Cowboys minus 11, and I have Dolphins. I think Dolphins are going to absolutely take care of business against the Raiders. Yeah, I think I don't mind either one of those. So I have Minnesota at Denver. Vikings plus two and a half. Mm -hmm. This is, there. I'm going to be honest, on the, on the ballot, on the board here, there's a lot of heart picks, yeah. which could be good. Could be or great. Or it could be great. <laughs> I love buying into something like this. I love buying into Colorado. I love buying into Josh yeah. Dobbs. It's fun for me, and so I'm going to ride with them. Plus two and a half, they can still lose the game. Broncos country. They can still lose the game. Let's ride. <laughs> Let's ride. Uh, also, on the flip side, I think the, the Broncos are starting to feel themselves. They are, man. They are so we've got a hungry themselves. Vikings <laughs> versus a, a fat and lazy Bronco. Ooh. Mm. Wow. Next up, we got the Chargers mm. in Green Bay. 
I'm doing another little combo because I actually like the spread and I love spread. the over under. So I'm going to take the Chargers plus four and a half and then over 39 and a half. Okay. So um, you move the line. Yeah. Really? If I'm looking at you know this right now. You know 0-2 moving line. Did you know that? Last no, two. Yeah, you are. Last two weeks, right? No, uh, the week before it hit. So you're one for three. Yeah, I'm one for three. Again, it's not always, I'm not saying it's working. It's just fun. Yeah. Uh, but it, honestly, if I'm looking at it right now, I think I should probably move the under down more and then uh, <laughs> do like three and a half for the Chargers. But I'm going to let it ride. Leave it. I'm going to let it ride. Let it ride. Let baby. it ride. Let it ride. Uh, next up, this one should be the Cowboys and the Panthers, but it's not going to be because I, as much as I am not a huge Panthers fan, I am a little bit of a Panthers fan. And I am a, a lot not a Cowboys fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a little Panthers fan and a not Cowboys fan. Yeah. Big not. So I don't really want to pull for it. And I don't really want to emotionally hedge. Instead. I want the Cowboys with my 60. <laughs> so bad. Uh, good, they will. They're just like a bully that loves yeah. picking on like fourth graders. And then all of a sudden it's like meets an eighth grader. And it's like. Uh, uh, so mom. number three. Number three, Tampa Bay. San Francisco, minus 10 and a half. This is a big spread. I think San Francisco is going to roll. Oh, so you're going to blow out. Yeah, that's the blowout I'm going to take. Uh, I don't like the Bucs. I don't think they're good. They Baker they, they escaped the with... <laughs> he's the answer. They escaped with the win. I think the 49ers are focused. I think they got comfortable, and I don't think they're going to let that happen again. Could be so a I think game. they're going to blow out. Uh, I think the three games they lost are going to make it inexcusable to have a trap game this season. Mm, I like that. I like that um, Mr. Kyle. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join you. Philly, um, Ooh. KC Ooh. minus three. Or uh, plus Philly, three Philly. Plus yeah. three Eagles. The main reason for it, I have no idea which way it was going to lean. And the fact that it's, I was expecting like a minus one Eagles or like minus one KC. And so that it's three, I'm like, you know what? A game winning or another field goal as time expired means to win so or you know push. what I, or a push yeah so it's like i'm not gonna lose it that way at least so i i mean i really don't know it just felt like this was tempting which is probably dangerous you should probably listen to that and stay yeah. away but it felt fun i like danger i don't know eagles got a lot to say too after the the super Bowl. right it'll be a good game i think so i think it'll be a good game i also think though that the chiefs have a lot to say after the last two offensive show uh showings they've had yeah then jets Bills. Two. I'm going to take the under. It's at 40. Oh, I don't hate that. Jets have an amazing defense. Can't score any points. Bills defense isn't great, but I th I mean, they, I they're mean, the, the sole Jets. reason. It's they're the, the sole reason, though, that Buffalo stayed in the game against Agreed. the Broncos with four turnovers. And it's the Jets. So I don't think the Jets are going to score. And then the Bills fire their OC. Yes, sometimes that leads to like drawing up a little bit more, but the, the Jets defense is good. So I'm going to take the under here. One of the, one of the things that I'll say is the Jets were supposed to have a high-powered offense this year with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. How do you go from like anticipating, at least, to be a top-10 offense in the NFL to being a bottom-five? Like, how do you... I mean, I get Aaron Rodgers is good, but it, does he make that much of a difference? Or do yes. you think that there was a lot of hype around the Jets with Aaron Rodgers, but they weren't actually going to be a good offense this year? I mean, there's always the potential of that, but I think that he's that good. Because if you think about it, he's reading the defense. There's like 10 plays where maybe Zach Wilson's fumbling through getting two of those in there. So then he's way more accurate. He can read coverage better. You open up the pass a little bit. Then they have a good run game that is going to follow. You know what I mean? Right now, they're just so one dimensional. Yeah. Um, and Zach Wilson, he's made some good throws, but he's also missed so many throws Yeah. that or like made bad decisions that so, I think that's a big difference. But I mean, think about it. Look at Patrick Mahomes right now. Take him out of the Chiefs offense and look at the Chiefs. Besides Kelsey. Yeah, Kelsey, obviously. But yeah. but take Kelsey and give him, I don't know, Zach Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Like put Zach Wilson on the Chiefs right now and look at their offense. I mean, obviously the Chiefs yeah. this year haven't been insane, but like I do think- I that, don't know. My thing is also like, if you, so then- by that same argument, if you put like Aaron Rodgers on the Vikings, not the, that's a bad, bad example. If you put Aaron Rodgers on the Browns, like, do we think the Browns all of a sudden are a Super Bowl contender then? Like, 
you know, like it's a very, it's like how much better really. But obviously Tom Brady, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough argument. Just a, just throwing it out there. We're probably both going to go 0 and 5. Dude, I really hope. Like, I'm not even kidding. I don't care if I go on five. I want you. <laughs> like, I I would sacrifice me going zero for five if that means you going one for four. You just hate me. <laughs> I just think mm. it's awesome when you come in and you're like, I can't believe. <laughs> I just think that's awesome. It was a miserable week going zero for five. I'm still digging myself out of that hole. But you're you're above five hundred now. But it was a hole to dig myself out of. No, and wait till you go for five this week. If that week didn't exist, I'd be 26 and 19. What I think what I'm going to do on the last pod is I'm going to, like, whoever you, the five you pick, I'm going to put 50 bucks on the opposite. I'm like, whatever your bet is on the last five. You want to just hand me the $250 then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Big week in college football last week. We went three for four. The one I missed was I picked Ole Miss to cover against Georgia. Georgia still won, like I said, but... Ole Miss did not come even close to covering. I'm going to carry that over to my pick this week, lock of the week. I got Georgia just handling Tennessee. They traveled to Knoxville. It's a 10.5 spread in Georgia's favor. I mean, I think you can move that, that spread to 20 and be safe. So I'm going Georgia over 10.5 for lock of the week. Uh, second game, we got the Gamecocks taking on Kentucky. Night game at williams Bryce Stadium. The Gamecocks finish all the season against Kentucky and against Clemson, both night games. They have to win both games to become bowl eligible. And I'm going to go ahead and call it. We're going to get some Gamecock magic, and the Cocks are going bowling. So taking the Gamecocks over Kentucky this weekend. Uh, speaking of Clemson, I think they are you know, somehow at this point in the season with as bad as they've played, I still think they're overrated. Um, UNC is going to Clemson right now, or this weekend. They're 6.5 underdog. I'm taking UNC to come in and and uh, cover. The, we'll, we'll say cover on this one, but I'm really picking USC, UNC to win this game. Um, last one I got for y'all is we got Oregon State versus Washington. Washington has to travel to Oregon State. Um, Washington's undefeated so far. I think this, if they're going to lose, I think this is where they lose. So I'm picking Oregon State to win this game. All right, guys, take those picks to the bank. Catch you next week. All right, draft. We're going to do three picks, and it's going to be childhood games. Even Ooh, episode, I'm first. I go first. Sucks. You don't. God, baby, go. The draft's going to be the best childhood games, kind of like recess games, outside games. It doesn't have to be at recess, but you get it. Are we on the same page? Football, it's like we're going to put that in as pick zero for both of us. Like a yeah. pickup game of football. Or wiffle ball, you got to okay. Wiffle or wiffle, yeah, yeah. Both of you those are like are like there. god tier up here, perfect. The okay, so the only the last one we should think about like the top tier kickball. Ooh, so football, so, wiffle ball, and kickball, kickball top here. Top We're tier. locking that in. Those okay. are three for us. Like you, outdoor, you, you, gotta, you know that you love. Doesn't have to be recess, but yeah, you know that you love. Like as a kid, when you're playing tackle football, <laughs> oh, that's so fun, so fun. And uh, you just like didn't get hurt as a kid, really. You, you really so you did because really you're not. It's not high impact tackles or anything. It's not high impact. Hmm. All right. So this is the one that requires a certain setting. Candyland. Candyland. <laughs> nah. First up, I got sharks and minnows. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's, I understand. There's not always a pool laying around, but it is the best game. I like it. I like, I, like the, it. I like the call. All right. For me, I used to beat up on males, females, younger, older, you name it. I mean, I would whoop them in Foursquare. I mean, Ooh. the Foursquare game I played in my private Christian elementary school was borderline psychotic. I mean, I was all over the place. I would jump. I would. I didn't care who was in the square beside me. I would do you everything I possibly could to make them cry. That's wild. What a stud. I actually did multiple what a, times. You're just like the Cowboys. Gosh. All right, so pick two for me. I'm going to do capture the flag. Oh, okay. That is That was one of my favorite always. Okay. Yeah. I feel like since you did one in the water, I'm going to do one in the water, and we did this so many times growing up that I'm, I think I still have ear issues. But that is Marco... And then Polo, where's where's Polo here? 
I You're mean, like, I never found Polo. I would never. be screaming Marco Dude, for days. I would, I would go in the pool with eight kids, and I would be underwater for years. <laughs> I mean, they would all leave me. I love the thought of that. <laughs> They're like, hey, Christian, let's play Marco Polo. Go ahead and jump in the water. We're going to be in the pool soon. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then they, I'm just like drowning. And then they go and play wall ball. Oh, is that your third? I want it to be, but also I'm like tag. Like, tag, how do you not yeah. do tag, but then wall ball, but then tag. But then wall, but then wall ball. ball, wall ball, wall ball is three. For me, I'm going to go little kid. I, I feel like you gotta you gotta pay tributes to every stage you're in. And mm-hmm. when I was very young, you know what was always lava? The floor. The floor was always lava. To I mean, we floor. would climb the freaking couch, the counter. My parents would yell at me and my nieces I are would now start into that crying. and it's fine. Are they? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's a good. So honorable mention, obviously tag. But then another Freeze one, tag. Red Rover. Well, oh, yeah. Or flashlight tag? Did you ever do that one? Oh, I should have mentioned flashlight, flashlight tag. Flashlight tag. My fi- like my cousins, we did that growing up. Oh, mm. we had a base, and then we would do like flash. Oh, it was so fun. So fun. Gosh. Any of those? It felt like any of those games, like capture the flag, that you did it at night. This is like when you get into middle school, maybe you're like at a camp or something. Ooh. It just gets so much better. Anyway, episode forty six in the books. Almost fifty two. Almost a year. I don't know about you. But I'm feeling... 52. Uh, uh, I'm leaving. Uh, I'm going uh, home. Uh, uh. Peace.